Hey everyone, Leo is here, another Jumps the Lightning episode. We are continuing the video series on Azure IoT operations. Stay tuned. Hey everyone, Leo is here, another Jumps the Lightning episode, continuing the Azure IoT operations video series. I have John with me. John, how are you doing, my friend? I'm good. How are you? I'm doing awesome. I'm excited to have you and I'm excited to continue this video series. Before we are nerding out on all things MQ, John, which is the reason that you're here, who you are, what is it that you do? Yeah, uh, my name, of course, is John Lian, and I'm a product manager in Azure IoT. Uh, nowadays, working on Azure IoT MQ, which is part of Azure IoT operations. John, you know, we started this uh, video series uh, with our friend Reddy um, in the previous episode, giving us a good overview on Azure IoT operations. And if there is one thing that is very obvious that Azure IoT operations has a lot of moving parts, uh, you know, so to speak. And one of those moving parts is um, Azure IoT MQ. The first question that I want to ask you here for those who are not familiar with that space, what does MQ represent? And also, how is that getting used in the wild? Yeah. MQ is the, I kind of think of it as like the core message backbone for Azure IoT operations. Mm -hmm. And more specifically, it's an MQTT broker, uh, you know, a spec compliant MQTT broker, um, but it's also highly available and uh, Kubernetes native. So mm -hmm. how it's used in the wild, you know, like we hope customers will use it to connect their MQTT devices. We'll hope uh, customers will use it to uh, send data to the cloud. So. MQ is really, you know, just kind of iterating on what you're saying, the messaging backbone. Would it be fair to say that this is, you know, pub sub based? Yeah. So devices could publish messages to MQT topics and then other devices or services can then subscribe to those topics. And this All right. is what MQT broker does. Gotcha. So, you know, obviously this is part of Azure IoT, IoT operations. Now, Talk to me about how does that fit into the architecture of Azure T operations? Because MQ, generally speaking, this is not a new concept, right? MQ has been there, you know, this concept of architecture pattern has been there for ages now. Um, how does that fit into the paradigm of Azure IoT operations? So MQ is, uh, well, here's a diagram for the MQ's architecture overall. So yeah. as a uh, device, you start from the top left here. Uh, the device will send messages, you know, or public or subscribe to messages to MQ mm -hmm. via, and it first hit the Kubernetes load balancer, where it goes through a series of uh, replicas, which is um, scheduled by the Kubernetes API, where mm -hmm. um, multiple front end replicas can take the load, can the, take the load and distribute the load between your different sort of Kubernetes nodes, um, and then all of these messages are then partitioned by topic ID and session ID to one of several backend partitions, where then that data is replicated to several replicas. So all this is to achieve high availability um, and to be resilient against hardware failures and no downtime. And so yeah. like we can almost guarantee, well, we can get, we can get to no message loss. And then mm -hmm. also on this side, we have um, the cloud connectors which uh, is also highly available and shown here as replicas that mm -hmm. um, take the messages and they can send them to Azure, Azure uh, services, a number of Azure services here. And I got to ask you something here, you know, as you're talking about the cloud connectors and, you know, just generally speaking, the fact that this is all Kubernetes based, you know, this is by itself, that's a new concept, right? That we're bringing with Azure IoT operations with this entire stack mm -hmm. is deployed in Kubernetes. But coming back to my, uh, to the original question that I wanted to ask here, looking at the cloud connectors and lo looking at the data services that we have in Azure, right? Um, I'm used to the fact that we have, you know, SaaS tokens in order to create basically authentication handshakes between these type of components. Um, but I don't think we have like SaaS tokens here in MQ, right? That's right. Yeah. So, you know, the, <laughs> the connectivity to the cloud from the edge is kind of an old age old question where like you have to have, uh, you know, security is super important. And mm -hmm. then um, using SAS tokens and in some cases, X509 certificates um, can be difficult to manage. And, yeah. uh, you know, there's like they expire or they might leak and that's kind of dangerous. And so um, 
luckily what we have here at LTMQ as well as Azure LT Operations is deployed as an ARC extension. Mm -hmm. And uniquely because of the ARC extension, this allows us to use, uh, uh, get a Azure Entra managed identity uh, mm. provision on the Kubernetes cluster. And so you are able to use uh, Entra and RBAC to manage the security between IoT MQ and these Azure services, which means yeah. there's no resources managed on the edge. Like a, like a closed loop because everything goes through ARM in the control plane, basically. Um, That's right, yeah. yeah. Okay, so this is a, this is a super cool architecture. Um, John, I know that you have a demo for me. I, I was really excited because I know that you have a demo. I never seen this demo. This is going to be the first time seeing this demo, which is unusual, you know, when it comes to Johnson Lighting. So that's why I'm pretty excited about that. Um, mm -hmm. What is it that we're going to do in this demo? Yeah. So in this demo, we're actually going to show you. See these green arrows? Yes. I'm going to show you this uh, this flow. So we're going to start with a device. In this case, not a physical, but a simulated device sending right. some messages all the way through the different uh, replicas and partitions of MQ, mm -hmm. and then coming back out and then going through the cloud connectors, and we're gonna send them to three different Azure services at the same time. And mm. this is kind of, I wanted to show kind of like how you configure it, and I wanted to show like, this is kind of flexibility is the point. Very cool, let's see it in action. All right, let's go. So, so here we go, I will clear this. I like it, you already have all your things organized. Yeah. Um, okay. So this is, uh, we'll start off with type open up K9S and K9S is just the Kubernetes uh, cluster kind of viewer. It's really, really good. Um, mm -hmm. I love being using it to just keep my cluster, uh, in view. So yep. here I've already deployed Azure IoT operations and you can see my, your, the AIO MQ pods running mm -hmm. already. Mm -hmm. And then, so at this point we have the arc extension installed. And then, so what we need to do is actually set up the security between um, what we have here on Kubernetes and Azure, right? So the mm -hmm. first thing I will do is I will just get the intra principal ID of the Arc cluster using this Azure CLI command, and I will mm -hmm. store it into an environmental variable. So that's done. And then here I have like several uh, commands. So each one of these commands actually just does uh, is an Azure CLI command that does the Azure yeah. RBAC role assignment for the, you know, the principal ID we stored here as these yeah. job function roles, like the event hub. Yeah, data mm -hmm. Event hub, the sender, the receiver. Yeah, I see that. These are, so just trying to connect the dots to the architecture diagram that we saw before. And this is literally the question that I just asked you, right? That that handshake between between the services, right? And, and MQ, right? Correct. Yeah. yeah. So mm -hmm. I think this is the last one here. And it takes a, takes a few seconds here for all the permission assignments to be done. And now our MQ on the cluster now has the permission to access those uh, Azure services as we define here. Mm -hmm. And next up, I'm actually going to deploy the Kubernetes resources that creates the connectors. Mm -hmm. So here you saw like for a second there. Yeah, I saw the activity. Um, yeah, it came up pretty fast. But you see here like bridge, DLV2, and then down here we have the EH. So these are just the, the pods, the containers that have the connectors that um, will actually send the data to the cloud. And I mm -hmm. just want to quickly go through this. Uh, this is the Kubernetes uh, YAML file that I just deployed, the demo.yaml. Mm -hmm. It's kind of long um, in that it contains all of the configuration, including, you know, the endpoint. And then like uh, the settings that I want to use, like, and then, but I want to just highlight this part where yeah. the authentication to this event grid endpoint includes no credentials. Yeah. Like I didn't have it's to store any Kubernetes secrets. I didn't have to copy and paste any SaaS tokens. Mm -hmm. like yeah. This is a, this is a pretty important piece. Like I, uh, you know, it's like people need to understand this, uh, very carefully here because we are talking about like it's like I mentioned like it's a closed loop right because of the manager that they was entra like and because this needs to be highly secure I mean at the end of the day we are sending messages across the pipe right and you don't want to have like some sort of a man in the middle situation so that's why you know this is very important that closed loop notion of architecture yeah exactly and we have the TLS encryption enabled as well yeah. um, the RBAC permissions are manageable at scale 
and mm -hmm. uh, there's no credentials to lose or leak. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yep. So, I love a good YAML. Long YAML, scroll down. So here, we're just gonna open MQTT UI, which is another cool tool that allows me to just look at the messages on certain MQTT topics. Mm -hmm. uh, we don't have anything there now, but that'll change. So that's open. And here I have the next message. This is kind of like a simulated temperature sensor. So what we have is here a plain Mosquito client, Mosquito Pub, which is a popular MQTT client. Yeah. Um, and it will just publish a bunch of messages that look like this, just 500 lines of random temperature and humidity data. Yeah. You know, shameless, uh, shameless plug here, John. Uh, when it comes to when it comes to mosquito and the client, and I can see that you know as you are running this, we can already see the messages um, in uh, in the Jumpstart Agora retail scenario that we have. We'll link it down below in the description. We actually use mosquito to generate, also to generate like a publish, just kind of publish messaging messages across across the pipe, and we also use those type of humidity and 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 sensor telemetry in general. So kind of nice correlation there. Yeah, and the mosquito is so good because it's so popular and standard yeah. compliant, and we want to be uh, MQTT compliant for sure. Yeah. And so for now, uh, I want to kind of show you this data flow diagram. So we saw the architecture diagram, and I said that the, the green arrows. But right. um, so here, but in this particular demo, we have the sensor. So this is the messages coming from mosquito going to IoT MQ to the back end and front end pods. Let me see if I can get those. Oh, whoops. So you can actually see the front end and back end pods here. Mm. And then that goes to the connectors, which we saw deploy later. And here we have, and then the there's three connectors that goes to, uh, we're going to send the messages to three places at the same time. So Event mm. Hub, Event Grid, and Data Lake. So mm. Event Hub is actually via its Kafka endpoint. And then event grid is via its MQTT broker. So this is actually MQTT bridge here. Mm -hmm. And then data like this directly writes into a Delta, yeah. Delta table. And then actually from here, event hub, event grid, well, I have set it up both to actually store the messages inside storage containers so that we just get them uh, inside Azure to, for demo, it's easier to see it that way. Very cool. And it really aligns with, and it really aligns with the architecture diagram that you just showed, right? I mean, you can see all these, all these components that you see in a, you know, yes, it is a deep dive diagram and you know, very, very detailed. But, but still, when you start seeing those connections, those data, data endpoints, and all of that, and you can see the pods in the Kubernetes cluster, this is where things are starting to jello, and you can start to see the actual deployment happens. That's right. So that's cool. Yeah. And so at this point, we go to Azure portal. Let's see how the message is coming along over there. Mm. Oh, yeah, here we go. So here's I am in my event hub, mm. and I can already see yeah. uh, the messages coming in. Very and cool. We can quickly go to um, the storage account. These are all called expert happiness because that's what the code space I'm using is called. That's a randomly <laughs> generated name, but it helps me remember uh, yeah. when I'm using a bunch of resources. So um, we talk about this is event grid capture, event hub capture, and the telemetry table is just for the mm -hmm. data lake. So it's not super easy to see in Azure portal because these are app role compressed. Yeah. But at least we can see that they exist. And then let's see if yeah. we can, you can kind of- And I remember, so this yeah. is kind of yeah. interesting. And this mm -hmm. is kind of interesting, John, because I remember in the conversation that I had with, with Reddy when we did the overview for IoT operations, we talked about this notion of contextualizing the data. Right. So, yeah, this demo is just the raw data, right? Like in the very basic, I have a sensor. Let me just get the data to cloud, like yeah. without any processing. Like this is, and then, but then this demo shows you how it can be done pretty simply um, and securely. Okay. And then if you want to process, yeah, that would be the next step. Yeah. The normalizer, how we mm -hmm. like to call it, which is something that we're gonna that we're gonna show in uh, in future episode. John, thank you so much for uh, for this awesome demo. Again, this is the first time I've seen the demo. I always like to see demos when you see things in real time, like side by side, when you see deployments, when you start seeing messages, because that gives a real feeling to the demo that something really happens. And it doesn't matter if you're using a simulated sensor in this case. At the end of the day, 
you know, messages or messages, pop sub is pop sub, you know, it's really the architecture and the pattern here that is important to emphasize, right, John? Right, yeah, the architecture, and then um, again, the security and the flexibility of the product we really wanted to show. Yeah, John, thank you so much for uh, for joining me uh, today to this uh, to this episode, and for the Jumpstart Lightning uh, audience, thank you so much for your continuous support. As always, make sure to like, subscribe. We are continuing the video series um, coming up, and we're gonna see you in the next one. Bye, everyone.